this actually started about 15 to 20 years ago between my brother and I. We're collectors and we would buy and flip things basically. And we would go to flea markets, we would go to local stores, we would go to local conventions and we would buy something for real cheap and then flip it, make some money, right? So we figured we can do this too. So we started buying a little bit more, buying collections. And as the business grew, we basically started getting accounts. We've always been into the figures and Comic Con and different toys and different stuff coming out. For my sister, about many eons ago, was a power show on eBay. And, you know, we sold a lot of figures, a lot of McFarlane, a lot of Mezco, a lot of different toys, and, and it was something really cool and it's something that El Paso didn't have. I mean, you had KBs at the time at the mall and other stuff, so it was just kind of like art collection type of stuff, going to Comic Con type of stuff, and and uh, you know, we just talked about it, like, oh, what if we had a shop? What if we could open a shop? What if we, you know, Paso didn't have a shop like this? And it was, it was just kind of one of those things that just sat in the back of your head for a while. Uh, you know, just always there, kind of like, you know, talked about it, whatever. She does, she went through all her professions and whatnot, and went through all my jobs and whatnot. And, and then one day I just told her, hey, I don't want to work for Sears anymore. Wait, can I say Sears? Are they going to sue us for Sears? <laughs> I can say Sears? You can say Sears. I always knew El Paso needed a good comic book store, and specifically on the east side of town. One that was always open, one that had a variety of merchandise that appealed to everybody, not just men, but also to women. And I'm telling you from experience, I would go into a comic book store and I would feel very uncomfortable, or they were closed, or they had irregular hours, or they didn't have a variety of merchandise. So I always told my brother, we need a good shop in town. And I was like, let's open up a toy store. And she's like, are you serious? And I was like, yeah. She's like, you think we could do it in El Paso? And I was like, yeah, we can do a toy store in El Paso. It'd be easy. It's going be that hard. I mean, you know, there's not much around. KB said closed down. You had GameStop, it was just video games. You have Toys R Us where you find like the two toys, you know, you really couldn't find stuff. And then she's like, I don't know, I don't know. I text her like 10 minutes later, Instagram account made. What? Made an Instagram account. What do we call it? We started spitballing, ideas started rolling, and I was just kidding. I don't know if I was fucking around, you know. And she ate it, she went with it, and we ran with it, and God, we're here three years later, man. I started writing a business plan, something I had never done before. It was extremely difficult, and it took me about six months. Um, and once we did that, we started looking for a location. Again, I was specific as to what I wanted, in a sense. I kind of had tunnel vision, I'm not going to lie. I knew it needed to be on the east side. I knew it had to be near a GameStop. I was targeting the same demographic. Um, I, and a big thing, I wanted a place where people could park. I was tired of going to certain stores and there was no parking anywhere. And so there we were, Dave and I, in the evenings, on weekends, looking at place after place after place. And we found a few and Dave was like, yes. And I was like, no. And I was dead set in what I wanted and how I envisioned my store. And we kept looking and we found a spot down the street as a matter of fact. But it, I just, I, once again, no parking. And the agent who was showing us the place said, well, I have a place down the street. It's a little bit bigger. And I said, well, let's go take a look at it. And we ended up here. Mind you, it's a little over 2,000 square feet, so it's pretty big. And I walked in, we walked in, Dave and I looked at each other, and mind you, it was bare. White walls, bare floor, the wall behind you didn't exist. One huge room. And the first thing I said to Dave, how in the world are we gonna fill this place up? Like, I know I had all these people being like, hey, you're not gonna open, are you gonna carry this, are you gonna carry that? And and then if it was like, oh, anime, and I was like, anime, what is, I don't even want, you know, it's like adult cartoons, I don't know what that is, like, I don't know what anime is. We stocked up on anime stuff, and then we had a lot of, you know, I don't people in El Paso. And uh, sure enough, we got ready, we went to Comic Con, her and I, we hustled, we got in every single line, we brought all kinds of Funko, all kinds of Hasbro, all kinds of Mattel, all kinds of Bluefin, NECA, you know, everything. We loaded up, man, we loaded up, and we brought it all back, and we posted, and the people didn't think we were real. She announced it. We opened a day, and I think that day, man, we easily made almost 10 grand that day, probably opening day. Um, I mean, one of the first things I sold was some Dragon Ball stuff. It was like two, three hundred bucks, and I was like, 
I've never seen Jack in my life. And then it, it got rolling, spitball effect, people started talking, mayhem this, mayhem that, you know, um, you know, then you had other people talking, you know, I don't know how mayhem does it, toys are bootlegs and whatever, but word spread like wildfire, people came into the shop and they thought it was legit, everything was legit. We knew that we would have people coming through the door, um, we knew we had things that people wanted to buy, but again, we, we had been out of this business for so many years. We didn't know what would work and what didn't. So it was a lot, it was trial and error at the beginning. Um, and sure enough, we had merchandise that flew off the shelf and then we had other merchandise that we couldn't give away. Um, and again, the market had changed, so we wanted to stay afloat and see, okay, what works and what doesn't. It's always my sister's deal with the uh, advertising and stuff. You know, um, we did a little bit of radio, we did a little bit of, you know, I mean, all everything's social media, but, she went her route. We even talked about getting a billboard at one point in time, but it's kind of like, how do you get one billboard? Like only one street, you know? It's kind of rough. Um, I just think word of mouth helps us a lot. El Paso helps us a lot. El Paso loves us a lot. And with this like eight percent of haters that don't like us, don't matter to us. Their friends still shop here, and you know they still buy gifts for here for them, so it don't matter to me. Um, but just we're, we're just there's plenty of shops. We can all live here. We can all do it here. You know, everyone knows, you know all your comic book shops, you know where you can go. And I'm not gonna lie, we sell out of comics sometimes, some like, hey, you've been down the street, go try so-and-so, you know, go try them. This, 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 is, this is for fun, it's something we like, you know what I mean? Word of mouth, man, word of mouth is probably the best. I know what works for us, and, you know, they say imitation is the biggest form of flattery, so I do see other, not just comic book toy shops, but other businesses copy things that we do, it's fine. But it's not just doing that, it's maintaining the customer service, it's having the product available, it's having the product priced appropriately. It's a combination of things. Um, this, you know, we're open seven days a week, we're open till 9 p.m. A lot of stores close at five or six. Well, that's when people get out of work, you know? So you have to kind of go extra, do extra things to accommodate the customer. Um, and I think, you have to be consistent in doing it and as long as you're consistent it works and it works for us i mean all the girls that have worked here and guys that have worked here um you know they say work is work and you should leave it at work but we're very small we're very tight-knit we have to have great communication um i'm nothing but love for the people that have worked here before so let me talk to you about the employees of mayhem Obviously, other than myself, but you'll only find me here whenever we have events. Um, then there's David. David's my brother. He's the manager of the store, um, except when I'm upset with him, but he's a shift leader. Only the shift leader. Mind you, only one person works per shift, okay? And he is really into wrestling. Um, anything about wrestling, he knows. And there's Cassie. Sassy Cassie. And she is like my mini-me and she can pretty much run the store. She's like the assistant assistant manager, um, and she knows it all, and she's been here the longest with us. I met her one of my first times coming here. I was an employee at met her one of my first times. Um, smiley, happy, I was like, okay, okay. Um, when I got my interview, I don't think I've ever been so scared about someone. Like, she's just so, and she's like that because this is her business. You can't just let anybody in there. So I understood her her being intimidating, her being selective, her being picky. I get it, but I was so nervous. She like sat me on the chair and she's like, okay, and I was just like, oh, okay. And I was just so I was so scared of her. I was so nervous. Um, and I got hired. And I was like, I was honestly really surprised that I got hired. Um, but as you get to know her, she's she's become a friend. You know, she's still my boss, and I still respect that of her, but she's become my friend. We text, and we're just sending each other memes and gifts and tagging each other on memes on Facebook. She, we've had, we have that relationship now, and that's something I can really appreciate because I've never had that with an employer. I've never had that with a boss, and I don't think that many people have that, honestly, whether they're the boss or the employee. And I'm so grateful for her for giving me this opportunity. Um, like I said, this is the best job I've ever had, and I don't think a lot of people can say that. So I'm really grateful for her. Sister slash boss, man. That that right there is trials and tribulations, man. Because um, you care for your siblings, so um, I think at first we butt heads a lot because personal lives got involved. Um, but being adults and mature and Romelli's, you know, we talk it, hack it out, and 
you know, hey, work is work, home is home. Um, she's great, man. She's been good to me and my family. She's been good to me and the girls here. Um, what, I, what I do like is that she's not here often, so no, no, that's not what I do like. What I do like, what I do like is that like I can tell her something. Hey, we need this, or I see this, or let's not order this, and let's order this. And she's like, hey, you're at the shop. It makes sense, you know? She'll look at her side of the angle from numbers and what moves and what doesn't move. And she's been good, man. She's really open-minded. And then what I like is that she always tries to do something a little different. Um, I don't agree with it all the time, but it works. Some stuff I don't know, she knows, and it just it works really well with each other because we work off of each other very well. There's times I think she buys plushie and it's not gonna sell and it sells, you know? And then I order stuff and it doesn't sell and I'm like, oh man, I gotta discount this, get rid of it quick. So, uh, it's been a good, it's, it's a good relationship. I couldn't, uh, I mean, I had a better boss or two, but she's cool, man. She's cool, it is what it is, you know? She works well, even though I'm here on a Sunday. I'm trying to get ready for Game of Thrones, but whatever. It's been a roller coaster, I'm not gonna lie, but it's been one of the, one of my biggest accomplishments in life. and. And I guess the best part is to this day, I still pinch myself when I see people coming into the store, excited to be here and, and shopping. And, and it's very satisfying for me that I have people who love working here, working for me and, and make a living because I've, I've been given, I've given them this opportunity. You know, I'm giving back to my community. My community has been, El Paso has been so good to me that I feel like I have to give back. And so that's pretty much how Mayhem started.